break down a 1997 4.0 Jeep Wrangler TJ engine uh, for rebuild. So I'll show you all the components, how it works, and uh, the process. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the valve cover. Next, we're going to move the, remove the distributor. Here at the front of the engine, we're going to remove the temperature sensor. Now we'll remove the thermostat housing. You can see right in here is where the thermostat is housed. How this works is uh, this is just a spring that's affected by temperature. And as the engine heats up, the spring opens this small valve and lets water circulate throughout the engine. It's just uh, it's been used for a long time. It's just a mechanical way of monitoring engine temperature. Now we're ready to remove the cylinder head itself. Once you break the head loose from the head gasket and pry it up, you can release the push rods. And now's a good time to take those out so you don't accidentally bend them removing the head. What the push rods do, as you can see, they have a hole in both ends and they run on top of the cam, which we'll t remove here in a minute, uh, moving them up and down, and that's what activates the, uh, the, the valves. Now we should be able to remove the cylinder head. Which is exceedingly heavy. Now we can remove the cylinder head gasket. Now we're getting into the interesting stuff. You can see the cylinders themselves, the six pistons. Oftentimes you can tell just roughly how much wear is on an engine by how much lip you have here. Over time the piston rings will wear down the cylinder walls and engines with lots of miles on them will have a, a, a lip there. That's not a problem. It can be remachined or bored or honed, oversized pistons, oversized rings it's not a problem but as long as it's clean and not scarred uh, this looks like it's been a good well taken care of engine upside down and the oil pan removed this gives us a really good insight you can see how the engine itself works here we have the camshaft the connecting rods to the pistons the crankshaft over here we have the oil pump you can see right here on the side right in the middle of the camshaft there's a drive gear that does two things it drives the distributor as well as uh, drives the oil pump which you can see here with the sump. This is, sucks the oil down from the bottom of the pan up in, into the engine. And then we have uh, right here the crankshaft cradle. On these long engines like this, uh, they have long crankshafts and they tend to, can tend to uh, wobble at high speed or high RPMs. That's really bad. It'll break the crankshaft. Some of the old early engines, a uh, hundred years ago or so, there were straight eight engines and they had real problems with that. They just are not high revving engines. So one thing that they do is, uh, you may have heard of four bolt mains. These are the main, back main bearings. Racing engines sometimes will have two of those just to be, hold that crankshaft even more secure, prevent it from uh, warping or, or um, um, getting out of balance. What they've done here is uh, this cr additional cradle of the steel to hold that, secure that in place. So that's kind of what you're looking at. So first we'll remove the oil pump. Here you can see how the oil pump works right there. See that little groove? The bottom of the distributor fits into that. And as the distributor turns, it rotates this and uh, creates a suction and lubricates the whole engine. Now we can remove the crankshaft cradle. Before we can remove uh, the engine components, we've got to remove the uh, crank balancer and all of the timing gear and chain. To remove the crank balancer, you have to use a special puller because it is pressed on the key. Shaft, there's the key, and there's the balancer with the slot for the key. Now we can remove the timing chain cover. Now we can remove the timing chain cover.
Now the camshaft itself. And there's the cam. You can see the lobes, kind of an egg shape on there. As that rotates, that pushes those push rods up and down that we looked at earlier, which exchange open and close the valves. And that center gear is what runs the oil pump distributor. You can remove the crankshaft bearing caps. We can remove the connecting rod caps. All right, with the caps removed, we can see here you can see the bearings on the connecting rods themselves. They just kind of clamshell around the crank. If I can get one out here, to show you. This will tell you a lot about engine wear. So now we can remove the crankshaft. Now we can remove the pistons. And last of all, we'll remove the cam lifters. I think I may have misspoke earlier. These uh, push rods don't ride on the cam themselves. The lifter rides on the cam and the push rod goes up and down to move the valves, just like that. Most of the time I prefer to shoot with, with the two point. I like the two point best, but there's sometimes it, it is nice to have single point if you're not moving so much. So I can simply dis disconnect it here 